and good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Hafiz Brazuki. You're watching Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider the news of the day. Now, I'm sure many of us are still digesting that special announcement by the Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin. Over the next 30 minutes or so, we will be speaking to public health experts to help you put into context what has just been announced and hopefully provide you with some calm and clarity to deal with the next two weeks. Now, let's begin with a quick summary of the updates on COVID-19 from earlier in the day. The 125 new confirmed cases as reported today. This brings the total number of positive cases in Malaysia to 553. Now, 95 of those 125 new cases were linked to the public gathering at the Sri Ptaling Mosque. The number of patients in the ICU and requiring aid of a ventilator to breathe have also increased from 9 to 12. So, Hafiz, what do we know of the special announcement made by the Prime Minister just now? Sure, Melissa. First things first, we have to look at uh, the number of things that he has announced. And firstly, uh, there is a travel restriction order uh, for all activities, sports, right. cultural, social, and however, despite this uh, travel restriction order, there is, uh, I mean, all this uh, uh, pasar awam, pasar raya, kedai runcit, right. and all these, uh, I would say, uh, the essential shops, yeah, items. Will still be uh, open. Shop will still be open, so there's no there's no worry on that. Mm. And and for the uh, Muslims. There, there's no, there should be no religious activities in mosques and surau, including uh, the Friday prayers. That's right. So that was echoing a statement made by the Islamic Affairs Minister Zulkifli al-Bakri today saying that surau and mosque activities, including Friday prayers, are to be suspended nationwide from tomorrow onwards. The suspension will be for 10 days, as decreed by the Agong, and the caretakers of the mosques and surau's are also urged to undertake cleaning and disinfect uh, initiatives at the premises. So to reiterate what the Prime Minister has just said, um, yes, there is a travel restriction order being imposed uh, beginning the 18th of March, that's Wednesday, the 18th of March, for two weeks until the, 20, the 31st of March. However, during this period, uh, shops will be open, so uh, we you know grocery shops will be open, convenient supermarkets, shops. convenience shops, uh, mini marts will still be open for people to have access to the uh, everyday essentials. All right, what else do we know regarding the travel restrictions? Okay, the next thing on the list is, of course, uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin has announced that complete uh, overseas travel ban for Malaysians. Mm. So that means they should, no one should be going out of the country, and even if they do, uh, they should do a self quarantine uh, for about. 14 days, 14 and that's days. and that's normal. And also, when nobody's going out, mm -hmm. no no tourists are also allowed okay. uh, to come. And this will uh, take part for as long as the two weeks travel. All right, so, uh, two weeks so a complete travel ban going in and out of the country. Anyone coming out from uh, coming back from an overseas visit needs to um, impose a self quarantine 14 days. Uh, also, very important in the special announcement, we have the closure of all um, preschool and uh, private schools, uh, kindergartens uh, and public schools. So, Taska, Sekolah Kerajaan and Swasta, uh, as well as uh, Astra, Sekolah Asrama Penuh, full um, boarding, boarding school, schools as well, international, international schools, schools, Tafis schools, will all be uh, closed for this period. And, and not only that, the IPTAs, the, mm. the universities, uh, both uh, public and also private universities, as well as all, uh, I would say, Institute Latihan Kemahiran, all skills-based uh, related institute, will also be closed down for uh, the duration of this, uh, I would say, travel restriction period, order. Yes. Uh, most important for us to remember that while we are seeing uh, the, the closures of schools and the like, um, we will also be seeing the closures of all government premises, including pri the private sector, except for uh, those involved in the essential services. And some of the listed essential services include the utilities. Yes. So water, water, electricity, energy, uh, our tel telecommunications will be available. Postal services will still be around. Transportation as well will still be open. Um, banking sector will still be uh, open as according to the Prime Minister's statement earlier. Yeah, so that, as you can see, it's quite uh, all-encompassing in mm -hmm. terms of the services. Uh, 
uh, your life should not be uh, put on hold basically yes. it's just a travel restriction order to ensure that this the spread of the virus is contained and not uh, accelerate exactly. further. So all these uh, security services will still be, uh, um, you know, in in I guess in effect. Now I think what's also quite interesting, Hafiz, is the fact that this um, two week travel restriction order does not begin tomorrow. It begins on Wednesday, the 18th of March. That leaves us one day to perhaps tie any loose ends or um, to kind of finish up unfinished business. I do want to call for a lot of calm during this time. We have one day to sort things out. So perhaps, you know, let everyone, uh, let's not overwhelm our essential services during this period. Let's not uh, resort to panic buying and hoarding of items in the one day that we have to digest and deal with this before the travel restriction uh, order is uh, put is put into effect. I think the key message here, Melissa, is of course the I would say the famous uh, hashtag keep calm and carry keep on. Keep calm and, and carry and on. That is the most important. We have to keep calm, as stated by the Prime Minister Tan Sri Muhyiddin Yassin. And I would like to uh, uh, take us to a very important thing that that was mentioned by mm. Tan Sri, where he said that uh, the travel restriction is actually uh, was made based on uh, the prevention and control of infectious. Uh, Diseases Act uh, 1998 and okay. and I was actually pouring through bits and pieces of it uh, just before the show oh. and uh, there, there are a few inst interesting things I, I found out. One of them is actually uh, the officer in charge of, of uh, given, given powers mm -hmm. uh, they can actually uh, search you and also make medic uh, conduct medical checks on anyone at any time okay. uh, including those in vehicles All and right. also they also uh, were provided under the Act uh, to designate a space as uh, or, or designate a space whether it's a neighborhood or an apartment uh, to be quarantined mm. if they found any cases to be from that area. Okay. So and and refusal to comply would actually constitute a, uh, it's basically a legal offense. Okay. It's no longer just uh, you know you're just spreading diseases but it is an actual offence. Okay. Well, you know, I, I think that the key here is that this is all part of the, um, the way for us to manage the situation. This is, again, as the Prime Minister has said, the situation seems to be escalating. One way to do that is to have a game plan in place. This is Malaysia's game plan. And uh, I think in the coming uh, hours and days, we will be hearing more about what this means, what this travel restriction order means. But also, um, in a way, because this is perhaps the first time we are all dealing with this, for us to just keep calm and make sure that we're receiving sources of information from reputable, verified sources and not to believe rumours uh, and speculations spread on social media. Very quickly, I do want to say um, for those, I mean, there's been a lot of pictures and videos of panic buying. Um, Malaysians with trolleys yeah. full of groceries, full long of lines at supermarkets, empty shelves. And uh, the Prime Minister has reiterated in that speech that there will be enough food for all. Enough supplies. Enough supplies and enough face masks as well. So when we, th we think about you know, hoarding and panic buying, I hope we can also consider the many people who cannot afford to buy groceries yes, for two bulk. weeks in bulk or the people who may need it. So the more you hoard at home, you are not providing an equitable distribution for those who may very well be needing it. I mean, I had a conversation that, you know, this is the middle of the month. So many exactly. people cannot afford to be buying trolleys full of groceries. So perhaps something for us to think about. If we have extra, one of the things we can do is to share it with our community, share it with those who may need it much more than we do. Yeah, I think basically just buy what you need and make sure that you uh, don't overbuy anything yes. because it's just going to mess up the whole equilibrium. Yeah, so spare a thought for those who um, don't have and perhaps cannot afford. All right, we're going to be hearing from public health experts after this to help us make sense of some of the more uh, technical details of this special announcement that's coming up in just a couple minutes. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned to consider this. <laughs>
Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Hafiz Marzuki. Now, lots of developments about the COVID-19 outbreak from earlier in the day. And I'm sure you've been inundated with information and speculation on your multiple chat groups as well as your social media feeds. Um, but it's time for us now to reconsider what we know. Let's talk to the experts, um, especially to digest the special announcement by the Prime Minister in announcing the travel restriction order. Now joining us on the line, we have Professor Datuk Dr. Adiba Kamarul Zaman, Dean of Medicine at University of Malaya. She's also a member of the Special Slango Task force to tackle the COVID-19 outbreak here in Selangor. Now, uh, Prof Adiba, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, can I begin with that special announcement by the Prime Minister? What did you make of this announcement of the travel restriction order for two weeks starting Wednesday the 18th of March? Well, I think um, many of us uh, have been sort of expecting it in some shape or form of some kind of restriction given the, um, uh, you know, rapid increase in the number of new cases detected in the last 48 hours. It was clear that something urgent and something um, wide-ranging needed to be done if we don't want to see further escalation in uh, the spread of the disease. Now, Prof, uh you are also part of the uh, special Slango Task Force on COVID-19. Uh, can you probably shed some light on uh, to what this uh, special task force is for? And is there anything that is specific uh, that this task force is doing? And what is, the, what is the main priority? What is the current priority for the task force? Well, when Yamad um, um, Bohamad, the Datuk Sri uh, MD, uh, uh, you know, decided to have this task force. It was uh, based on his concern that um, the, la the largest number of cases reported to date um, come from the state of Selangor. And um, the idea is uh, for us to advise uh, the Ministry Bazaar on measures that can be taken to, to um, address this uh, pandemic. Um, in support of uh, what uh, the Ministry of Health is doing. And, uh, and so that, that's uh, really been our uh, brief um, to, you know, to, to minimise the impact on the people of Selangor and the impact on businesses. Mm. Uh, if I could come back, uh, Prof Adiba, to the announcement. Uh, now, the idea, the announcement of the travel restriction order, could I get some clarity on how you view this versus, say, some of the measures taken by other countries overseas for a, a more drastic lockdown? How do you see this travel restriction order? Um. Yeah, so I think that, that there still needs to be some clarity in terms of, I immediately got questions on what that, does it, does it mean that I, I have to stay home completely? Does it mean I can't visit my grandma? So I myself uh, am not clear about that. But what, what is clear is, you know, um, non-essential uh, offices and, and, and businesses um, uh, are closed and, you know, uh, retail, minimization of all um, retail uh, and, and other leisure activities. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think this, this kind of uh, um, is not, a, well, from my understanding anyway, because uh, like you, I've just finished watching it and still <laughs> need to digest it. Yes. Um, is it, it sounded to me it's not a complete lockdown like what you saw in or what you see in China and Italy where people are really not allowed to leave their house. Mm. Um, but this uh, is, is an attempt to make sure that people, you know, minimize movement. So don't go to work um, for the most part. Um, don't go, you know, shopping and... and, and uh, to, to other leisure activities, 
um, and really limit their movements to essential activities. That's my current understanding. But as I said, um, you know, um, I, I've just come off watching TV just, just like you have as well. <laughs> not had a chance to really digest it fully. Sure. So, so Prof, uh, do these new measures actually help, uh, I, I say all the medical term, flatten the curve? Can you explain to us about that? What flattening the curve is all about is to try and uh, basically reduce the surge of uh, new infections. See, what, what, um, what we hope to achieve in terms of flattening the curve is you kind of accept that people are, are going to get infected, but at a much slower pace than, let's say, if you suddenly, suddenly see 500, 1,000 new infections in the next 24 hours. If, if you can show the graph, you know, there's that huge uh, bell-shaped peak. Mm. Because what that will do is it will cross a threshold where our health system will not be able to cope. So you want to flatten the curve by... You know, having a few people getting infected, you 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 kind of uh, uh, come to accept that people are going to get infected, but at a much slower pace, so that you don't overwhelm the health system. See, okay, uh, and this is quite interesting because I, uh, you know, in in this graphic that we have up, it says the intended impact of enhanced hygiene and social distancing measures on co the COVID nineteen pandemic. You talked about this flattening of the curve. Um, yes. I, I, there's been a well, lot yes, of. But what the prime minister has announced is the social distancing measure. Okay. Which um, is the public health term to try once again minimize the number of people getting infected by so not allowing, you know, individual human beings from coming uh, into close contact with one another. Okay. I and do, I do so, want you to, to kind of explain that a little bit um, more, Prof. Adiba, because there's been a lot of confusion about what social distancing means. I mean, the, yeah. some people think it, it's about keeping, uh, you know, a two-meter distance between it's two all people. Of, all, all of the above. Actually. All of the above. <laughs> yeah. So it's, a, it, it's about... Um, it's about staying away from each other to stop the spread from one person to another. And it includes uh, things like, yes, at the individual level, uh, keeping a distance of, well, that this is still debatable. Is it one meter, is it two meter? But basically one, uh, you know, one person away from you, mm. not touching other people, no handshakes, uh, no kisses, no hugs. Um, and then big things like avoiding mass gatherings, you know, um, and uh, having, you know, uh, minimal contact with people if possible. And, but it also includes, um, yeah, uh, you know, closing like, like what has been um, uh, announced. Um, so, so places to, to, to discourage people from going. So, so Prof, based on this, uh, what should or shouldn't the public be doing right now? Because as you know, uh, I mean, this is a big announcement and people are still uh, confused to what actually they can or can't do, but what they should and shouldn't do. The first thing they shouldn't do is to panic. <laughs> That's so important. they should not panic. I think as the Ahmad Bahamad Prime Minister said, you know, there's plenty of food. Um, and um, uh, it's for two weeks. Uh, and basically, it's to stay home um, and uh, not go out unnecessarily, only to, you know, for those uh, who are working in essential services as listed. Um, and, you know, supermarkets and uh, grocery stores are still open, so if you need to go to those places, you can, by the sounds of it. Mm. Um, so it, it's not, from my understanding, it's not a complete lockdown where you can't leave your, your home. Right. 
Prof Fadiba, I want to get your opinion on something. Now, this um, in a kind of uniquely Malaysian way, whenever you know there's school holidays or there is time off or even there's fear, uh, many Malaysians balik kampung, so to speak. Uh, we 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 leave the cities, we go back to mm-hmm. our kampongs, we take our children home, and you know um, stay with the grandparents, perhaps. Perhaps fear, as you mentioned, uh, that Slango or urban areas are showing a high um, instance of reported cases. Do you think that this is a good idea? What, what is the medical opinion on this? Um, because I can see a trade-off in terms of staying away from the city versus spreading this outside of con- concentrated urban areas. Um, well, I think one of part of the reason uh, of the increased numbers in Selangor is because of the um, unfortunate event at the Sri Petaling Mosque. Plus, Selangor has a very uh, has a, a big population, higher density uh, of population. But what what it means now is, you know, whether it's going Bali Kampong or people from Kampong coming into the city, you want to limit all of that. You want to limit travel. So essentially, stay put wherever you are. Okay. All right. On that note, thank you so much, Prof. Adiba, for speaking with us, helping us make sense of this. Of course, you too have just heard that what we heard in the uh, in the past few minutes. So thank you for helping us understand this a little bit better. Now we're going to take a quick break and come back and speak to another public health expert right here on Consider This. Don't go anywhere. Nobel coronavirus yang seolah-olah masih tiada vaksin. Elakkan pergi ke epicenter. Kalau, lah. kalau boleh. Ya, lah. Kes-kes ni dapat dikesan dan dikorentin di hospital ataupun di rumah. Terdapat 86 rakyat Malaysia di Wuhan. Sosial ekonomi Bumi Putera ini tidak boleh dipisahkan, tidak boleh dikurangkan ataupun ditinggal. Pasal apa? Saya dekat tu lagi. Kira-kira yang sukses. Eh? Sukses is not necessary pada saya. Mm-hmm. Kalau kita nak menolong mm-hmm. sesuatu. Nobel coronavirus yang seolah-olah masih tiada vaksin. Elakkan pergi ke epicenter. Kalau, lah. kalau boleh. Ya, lah. Kes-kes ni dapat dikesan dan dikorentin di hospital ataupun di rumah. Terdapat 86 rakyat Malaysia di Wuhan. Sosial ekonomi Bumi Putera ini tidak boleh dipisahkan, tidak boleh dikurangkan ataupun ditinggal. Pasal apa? Saya dekat tu lagi. Kira-kira yang sukses. Eh? Sukses is not necessary pada saya. Lah. Mm-hmm. Kalau kita nak menolong mm-hmm. sesuatu. Nobel coronavirus yang seolah-olah masih tiada vaksin. Elakkan pergi ke epicenter. Kalau, lah. kalau boleh. Ya, lah. Kes-kes ni dapat dikesan dan dikorentin di hospital ataupun di rumah. Terdapat 86 rakyat Malaysia di Wuhan. Sosial ekonomi Bumi Putera ini tidak boleh dipisahkan, tidak boleh dikurangkan ataupun ditinggal. Pasal apa? Saya dekat tu lagi. Kira-kira yang sukses. Eh? Sukses is not necessary pada saya. Lah. Mm-hmm. Kalau kita nak menolong mm-hmm. sesuatu. Nobel coronavirus yang seolah-olah masih tiada vaksin. Elakkan pergi ke epicenter. Kalau, lah. kalau boleh. Ya, lah. Kes-kes ni dapat dikesan dan dikorentin di hospital ataupun di rumah. Terdapat 86 rakyat Malaysia di Wuhan. Sosial ekonomi Bumi Putera ini tidak boleh dipisahkan, tidak boleh dikurangkan ataupun ditinggal. Pasal apa? Saya dekat tu lagi. Kira-kira yang sukses. Sukses is not necessary pada saya. Lah. Mm-hmm. Kalau kita nak menolong mm-hmm. sesuatu. Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. With me, Hafiz Marzuki. Now, uh, we've just heard from Professor Dr. Datuk Dr. Adiba Kamrozaman, Dean of Medicine at University of Malaya. She too still processing the special announcement from the Prime Minister. Of course, what was announced was the travel restriction order that will be enforced on Wednesday the 18th of March all the way till the 31st of March. That's two weeks of a restriction for travel. Um, I'm sure details of uh, the special announcement will be made available and, to and, you on awani.com. And the key message uh, from this whole travel restriction order is of course to keep calm and yes. don't be panicked. Uh, yes. Don't go panic buying, yeah. don't go 
Yeah, uh, don't, I, I mean, don't lose yourself don't, in no hole. Don't yes. just absolutely keep calm. And I completely understand where the fear and frustration is coming from, or perhaps the uncertainty, because again, this is the first time many of us are dealing with such uh, a pandemic. However, again, um, as Prof Adiba mentioned, these are urgent and wide-ranging measures. There for a reason. Many of the medical community were expecting it. Now, let's find out what Dr. Kor Sui King, a physician and public health expert, has to say about this. Dr. Kor is uh, currently reading public policy at the University of Oxford. Now, uh, he's been on the show many times and it's a pleasure to have him back on the show. Hi, good evening, Dr. Kor. Um, so I'm sure you've also just had a, a few minutes to take a look at what the announcements were, uh, the specific measures that were announced. But what was your first initial reaction? Was this a wide ranging enough measure uh, that's been announced for you? Hello, Melissa, and hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be back. Um, you're right that uh, a lot of us are taking a few minutes uh, just to process uh, exactly how uh, this will impact our daily lives and whether or not it will be effective in uh, combating the spread of COVID. Um, but my initial reactions will be in, in several ways. The first one is uh, many of us, while we were expecting it, it was a pretty dramatic escalation from almost uh, no government reactions to extreme government reactions in a very short period of time. Mm. So there wasn't enough time, perhaps, for the population to psychologically get used to the idea that some restrictions uh, would have been necessary. But be that as it may, I think the second uh, quick reaction is, um, I think this reaction is probably um, a go big and go hard all at once initiative. And we have seen in many situations, for example, taking the barrel of the global financial crisis in 2008 when governments are needed to pump in more liquidity and money into the system. They did this also to ensure public confidence. And uh, if you do a lot of uh, measures all at once, uh, this could be helpful in uh, taking control of the situation and then returning some of that control over to the people, which is my third uh, quick reaction, because if people were to be able to feel that... Um, the government has the situation under control, the government has their best interests at heart, and the government will be ultimately predictable in their next steps, then they will feel a, a bit more control over their daily lives. Those are my first few thoughts, Melissa, but mm. uh, really happy to di dissect this a little bit more. Okay, Okay. so Dr. Ko, uh, if, as you can see, many different countries have taken different approaches to this uh, dealing with this uh, pandemic. And uh, as you can see, countries such as China, Italy, France, Spain and Denmark have taken drastic measures uh, to a complete lockdown in, in, in a bid to stop the spread of the virus. Meanwhile, uh, in South Korea, uh, they opted for uh, social distancing and mass, tans, uh, mass testing. So, uh, can, you, can you talk a bit about what Malaysia can learn from all these other countries and, and what, what, what are the lessons learned? Sure. Well, the first uh, important lesson is that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. Um, the word lockdown has been used, and I think in the next one or two days, we'll also use the word uh, curfew, for example, when in fact uh, this is actually, if I read the Malay translation correctly, an order for movement restriction. Mm. That, that's a very legal term. The medical and epidemiological term, uh, when we talk about diseases, is to talk about the concept of social distancing. What China did of uh, lockdown and moving in the military and locking down in at, at one point uh, about uh, 200 or 400 million citizens, um, that is one form of social distancing. All the way to uh, Italy's uh, closure of uh, public services and Denmark and Norway's closure of school, uh, those are other forms of social distancing as well. But a legal term for what Malaysia is going through right now, uh, to the best of my understanding because I'm not a lawyer, is an order for restriction of movement or a movement restriction order, not so much a curfew. If I think of a lockdown or a curfew, um, and uh, I actually had to go to my mom to ask her this very quickly, uh, and uh, the both of us uh, would think that uh, the last time Malaysia had a lockdown or a curfew was perhaps in 1969 after the May 13th riot. Right now, what we're having in Malaysia is not necessarily a lockdown or a curfew. I think we should be careful with those words so as not to create a necessary panic, but a movement restriction order so that uh, we can implement a lot more social distancing. Um, if, I, if I deconstruct uh, the six uh, specific steps that are taken, all these are measures to increase the social distance. 
But these measures uh, will probably be necessary for us to limit the spread of COVID because it, um, it will firstly limit the spread. Secondly, it will break the complacency that is surrounding the Malaysian population. Mm. We see in recent days that uh, we've got multiple large events uh, of hundreds of thousands or tens of thousands of people, and they're still congregating uh, in events. So perhaps uh, uh, one quick advantage of this uh, um, temporary order to restrict movement, a form of social distancing, is that it breaks the complacency of Malaysians and forces us to take this situation much more seriously. Right. I like that you brought that up, uh, speaking that the, you know, breaking the complacency of Malaysians. I also want to talk a little bit about the, the government reaction to this. You talked a little bit about this was quite a dramatic reaction, a go big or go home. Now, um, help us understand when it comes to dealing with outbreaks like the COVID-19 outbreak, for instance, how important is speed in dealing with a crisis, uh, with crises such as this? I mean, often you see that difficult, preemptive decisions made by governments are are seen to be an overreaction by the public. How would you comment on that? Mm. This is true that uh, this particular reaction right now, the, the order to restrict movement temporarily could be seen as an overreaction. Um, and in some ways, uh, the Malaysian government uh, has been uh, perhaps a, a little slow in instituting some measures of social distancing. But let's not talk about that right now. Let's talk about the possible overreaction. Um, during, a, during an outbreak, uh, every decision can be questioned. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the cruise ship. Should we let it uh, dock in Malaysia? Should we not let it dock in Malaysia? Keeping them on board is bad. Letting them go out is bad. Having a curfew or a lockdown or uh, um, an order to restrict movement is get, it's bad, but we also might um, have a necessity for it right now. While we're in the process of making the decision, speed is obviously important, Melissa, but also some consideration for the next steps for the government of Malaysia beyond this order, because eventually we will reach uh, around the 25th of March. And all of us will be wondering, will they extend uh, the, the orders of movement restriction? And that, I think, uh, is uh, something that the government needs to be very careful in thinking. In a sense, we must introduce an element of predictability. So speed is important, but predictability is even more important. If the citizens of Malaysia can see that the government's response is predictable, that we can see what's going to happen next, instead of... Um, but perhaps a little surprising as uh, with, with a quite a large set of um, measures all at once, if we're able to slowly escalate up and slowly as de-escalate down, the government becomes more predictable and people will become more, shall we say, calm and less prone to panic. A third um, element of speed is one. The second one is predictability. And a third element will now end here, Melissa, uh, is the element of proportionality. Outbreaks are moving very fast and uh, much faster than sometimes governments are able to handle and even understand, forget unhandle, just understanding the where the outbreak right. is going. So if we're able to have proportional responses that are good enough, uh, large, uh, sorry, large enough or small enough to the size of the problem, uh, I think this is a crucial consideration as well. So it's speed, it's predictability, it's also proportionality. And I invite uh, all of us actually, including the government, to very seriously consider the interaction between speed, predictability and the proportionality of responses, especially as we're thinking about whether or not to extend or to cancel this outbreak as we approach the 31st of March. Right. So, so speaking, uh, based on what you said, basically, what, what I could gather is uh, it, it sounds like the uh, travel restriction order is the first step uh, to a perhaps a more stringent uh, move. Are, are, are we looking at that? Could Malaysians expect uh, this uh, restriction order to be escalated to maybe a partial or full lockdown? What's, what's your thoughts on that? Mm. Uh, well, uh, there's a whole spectrum, you know. Um, on one small angle, uh, I think it's re there are six um, measures that have been announced and some of them are on one end of the angle, which is a little very reasonable, very mild. For example, uh, we will close down schools or close down universities. That seems quite reasonable, although I still believe they should have been sensitizing the population instead of announcing all six measures all at once. Right. Um, and then we go to the other end of the spectrum, uh, for example, which is a no foreign travel, so no Malaysians can leave, and no inbound travel, so no one can come into Malaysia. So that's a little uh, closer to the middle of the spectrum. On the other end of the spectrum, yes, we can roll out uh, the military, we can roll out the police, we can enforce a strict curfew where nobody leaves the home at all. Um, but I don't think this is something that uh, we should do or we even need to do. 
Um, that is uh, something very unprecedented during wartime. While we're at war against coronavirus, I don't believe that the situation warrants us to escalate that to getting Rela involved or the police to actively enforce uh, these uh, curfews or nobody leaves uh, after 8 p.m. or things like that. We're not in that kind of a war footing right now. Okay. So the suite of solutions that have been provided right now appear to be a shock to the system. This is true. But once you internalize it a little bit, you realize, huh, instead of... Um, introducing them one by one by one. The government has decided to introduce them all at once. It's a bit surprising to us, but I think Malaysia can still manage the situation, especially if we think about potential unintended consequences and try to mitigate those. Okay, I have uh, in the final minute that we have, I just want to know, a lot of us are kind of reeling from this announcement. How do you think we should you know, uh, deal with this, keep our humanity during a time of fear and uncertainty? Melissa, um, we need a national effort. All of Malaysia needs a national effort to unite and combine ourselves uh, and to think about other people, our parents, not just ourselves, our community, not just ourselves, our family and broader neighbourhood, not just ourselves. And this requires us to perhaps uh, do two very specific things. The first one is to prepare for unintended consequences. And this is all of society, not just the government. If you close down schools, then 5 million children will stay at home and they require childcare. And nurses and doctors and pharmacists will now be faced with a dilemma. Should I care for my child at home because there's nobody else or do I go to the hospitals and save lives? And these are the kind of very difficult unintended consequences that we must be very careful about. Let's think about unintended consequences not only for ourselves but also for other people. And, uh, and I think that's one very important thing. And secondly, Melissa, this is a national effort. In the sense that Malaysia has recently gone through a period where we've had political turmoil, we're perhaps very uncertain and feel very powerless about uh, where we are right now. But this outbreak presents uh, a crisis, uh, an opportunity for us to love one another, to, do, uh, to watch out for one another, because we're only as strong as our weakest link. It's in our interest to look, for, look out for somebody else, to care for somebody else, because if that person becomes unwell uh, or, or is uh, abused or, or for whatever reason as a result of uh, right. the situation, then the effects might come back to us as well. Yeah. We should love one another. This is a national effort. We should unite because it's also in our self-interest. Well, thank you so much. Well said. Thank you for joining us this evening, helping us put all of this into perspective. Fortunately, that's all the time we have on this episode of Consider This. I hope we left you with a little bit more information about the special uh, order uh, restriction order uh, as announced by the Prime Minister earlier. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Hafiz Marzuki. We'll be back with another episode of Consider This tomorrow. Thank you for watching and good night. Nobel coronavirus yang seolah-olah uh, masih tiada uh, vaksin. Elakkan pergi ke epicenter. Kalau, lah. kalau boleh. Kes-kes ya, ni dapat dikesan dan di quarantine di hospital ataupun di rumah. Terdapat 86 kaya Malaysia di Wuhan. Sosial ekonomi bumi putera ini tidak boleh dipisahkan, tidak boleh dikurangkan.